Welcome to the Principles of Service Management Lectures. I am Christian Grönroos from Hanken School of Economics. In a series of 16 short lectures, I'm going to share various uh, service management principle topics with you. The theme of the first topic is service as business model, service logic and customer focus. Service can be said to be a a generic business model. It's a way of looking at the business which is based on a certain approach called a service logic approach. And it is very much customer focused. Uh, of course, in spe specific situations, this generic business model is adapted in, in various ways. Now, the book which we are following is Service Management and Marketing, Managing the Service Profit Logic. And in this book, you can read more about the themes and issues we are talking about here. Now, business models are characterized by a number of things. For example, these four, strategic orientation, customer understanding, revenue generation model, and organizational solution. And during this lecture, lectures, we are going to cover all of these characteristics and others. Now, looking at service, uh, traditionally, service is seen as an activity. This is how the literature has treated service for the past decades. Uh, an activity meaning serve a meal or repair a machine or uh, transportation or uh, consulting or anything like that. These days, however, service is more considered a logic or a perspective on business and marketing, a perspective which, as I said, is customer focused. It's a way of developing the business, a way of approaching the customers, a way of organizing the business, and a way of uh, getting revenues. In other words, it is a business model. Now, service, let's start uh, by defining it according to the perspective or logic approach. Service is supporting another party's everyday processes in a way that helps this person or organization to reach its goals in a value-creating manner. It means that service as an approach means that, that the firm should not only deliver resources to customers based on however good market research, but instead, still, instead make sure that it functions in a way that customers consider as help a support to their just everyday life or everyday processes and do that in a way that customers really consider value creating for them. Now this means that a firm uh, needs to gear its processes and ways of operating towards supporting its customers' everyday processes. Let me give a few examples. Normet Group is a firm in the mining, supporting the mining industry, traditionally providing equipment and machinery to this industry. Now, uh, during the last decade or so, this company has uh, redirected its strategy towards a service approach and formulating its strategy as to understand and support its customers' mining operations and uh, do it in a way that facilitates value creation in the customer's uh, operations. The vision is formulated that by using our knowledge and expertise, we want to help customers improve their processes and improve their competitive position. Clearly here the intention is to go from just providing equipment and machinery towards doing it in a way that customers really are helped by directly. And of course, this has to be backed up with new ways of operating, more information, more uh, engineering support, perhaps, and, and, and other types of activities. Another example, a large Scandinavian bank. Uh, it doesn't deliver financial products and services to its customers, as most big banks do, and say that they are doing. They say that uh, their approach is to facilitate and maintain relationships with their customers. Financial products, financial services are a secondary issue. 
it is helping the customers in the relationship between the bank and the customer that is important. And then you use, among other aspects, financial products and services to do that. By the way, both firms have been very successful. Now, service management then, managing this. Well, service management can be described as a customer-focused management of service, regardless of the core of the firm's offering. My two examples here, one was from typical manufacturing industry and the other was from the service industry. Both take a service approach to their business and they develop business models based on service logic. Now, any firm, therefore, can be a service firm, any firm. It just requires a strategic choice and then a customer-focused service culture. Of course, it requires other things as well, but these are the musts. There must be a strategic choice made and a service culture with a customer focus must in the end develop. Now, if we compare then a service perspective on business with a traditional uh, perspective, goods or manufacturing logic, first we can say that the service uh, perspective means that the firm's processes aim at supporting its customers, everyday processes, whereas traditional approach, well, products and other resources are delivered to customers for their use. Secondly, value for customers emerges when resources provided by the firm are used. Value is therefore created during use, and we are going to talk more about this at a, uh, in a later lecture. Traditionally, value for customers is considered embedded in products and other resources and then sold to customers. And value is then destroyed during usage when the product disappears through usage and consumption. And thirdly, the offering to customers is therefore also different. It is a process consisting of resources required to support the customer's processes, whereas traditionally, the offering is considered to be a bundle of resources. It's considered to consist of uh, product, services, information, or combinations of all this. So there are distinct dif differences in these two approaches. We can say that the service logic or perspectives answers the question, what can we do for our customers, and mostly with our customers? Whereas the traditional goods or manufacturing approach is an answer to the question, what can we give to our customers? So there is a clear, distinct difference. Now, the reason for the service logic is, among other things, based on consumption, the nature of consumption. Because uh, consumption is an ongoing process, including one or several everyday processes. C consumption can be characterized as a journey with the supplying or service providing firm. The customer travels through its various processes with the firm, and the firm must support the customer's consumption throughout this journey. That is, support, provide service to the customer. So the conclusion is that regardless of what customers are provided with, they consume it as service. They consume it as service to their everyday processes in order to become better off in their life or business. So whatever we buy, the natural way of understanding consumption is that we use what we buy as service to ourselves, to our processes, in order to become better off, meaning to get value out of it. Now, finally, if we look a little bit closer to this, then the service perspective is multifaceted. We can look at the customer service logic, and we can also look at a service provider or supplier service logic. From a customer's perspective, the service logic is, based on the discussion a while ago, uh, that service it was, is what customers look for and what customers experience when they use resources and processes bought. All types of resources and processes are used as support to their everyday processes, meaning 
they are used as service. Customers consume, use everything as service. Therefore, the provider service logic just has to match this. So, according to the provider, the service logic means that service is supported to someone's everyday processes in a way to enable value to emerge for that person or organization. So, actually, service as a business model, service as a logic, is only a natural way of following the customer's way of consuming and using any type of resources. Now, next lecture will be about customer value and the value creation process. Thank you.